Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about holsters. And I think that this is a topic that uh, doesn't get talked about often enough. Uh, in fact, I was having a conversation uh, uh, just a few days ago with a, the owner of a gun store uh, that, that wasn't aware of some of the information that I'm going to give you right now. So the, the most important thing for you guys to know if you're going to carry a gun, okay, if you're going to be carrying a striker fired gun like this Glock 17, or 19 or 43 anything that's striker fired and has basically a light trigger pull or even like something like this um, M&P shield another very popular gun again very light trigger pull um, if you're going to be carrying a gun like this it has to be in a hard kydex holster okay it's got to be a hard holster um, that basically covers the trigger completely and basically locks the gun in place okay now it doesn't matter if you're carrying outside the pants inside the pants it has to be a, a hard holster you cannot carry this gun a striker fired gun in a collapsible holster so for example over here I have this MMP shield right um, it does fit into this collapsible holster which I find you know I find collapsible holsters soft ones like this very comfortable and easy to carry inside the pants okay because um, you know if you're carrying a a big kydex holster like this it really adds a lot of thickness to the gun um, so if you're carrying this outside the pants well basically the gun's gonna you know unless you know unless you have like a, a long shirt or you're wearing a jacket uh, this gun sticks out a lot okay um, and I, I just don't like my guns to be that visible um, so for that reason, I prefer to carry inside the pants in a in a soft holster like this. And what that means is I cannot carry um, a, a gun like the MMP Shield. Even though I love this gun, I think it's a great gun. I can't carry this gun. Um, what I carry uh, is a gun similar to this um, uh, Ruger LCP. Okay, this is a double action only, which means that basically there's a very long trigger pull. Okay, so that long trigger pull is basically the safety on this gun. Um, so when I have this gun in the in the collapsible holster like this, and I can wear this inside inside my pants. Okay, this you know basically it sits back here, basically on the hollow of my ass. And you know even with a light thin shirt like this in the summertime, the gun doesn't show, and and it, it sits it's so flat on my body that I can basically fall asleep on this gun. I can lay on the couch. And it doesn't dig into my body, but so if you want to carry comfortably like this, right? You have to have the right gun. It has to be a double action only trigger, okay? Uh, double action only. Um, it does, and there's a couple of different you know manufacturers that make guns like this, but it has to be double action only because that long trigger pull, right? Where that trigger basically is coming all the way back. Basically, it's like a large, like a revolver, basically. That hammer, right? You can see the hammer in the back here. See, that hammer basically has to, as you squeeze the trigger, the hammer comes all the way back and it, it goes forward. Okay, so so the that long trigger pull is the safety. Now, people will say, well, what if I have, let's say, like an M&P that has the safety on it? Well, here's the thing with safeties on uh, on, on pistols. Uh, the safeties are either so small, okay, that when you go to, to use it under stress, you're not going to find it. You're going to slip off of it. You'll you may just outright forget to 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 to, uh, to act, you know to take the safety off, uh, but even if you don't forget, the safeties are so small uh, on a lot of these compact guns that 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 you're not going to take it off when you want to take it off, especially if your hands are sweaty, it's raining, you know you know you're under less than perfect um, circumstances. Now, when the safety is big, right, like really big, then what happens is if you put this gun in a collapsible holster. Well, the same issue here. You know, the same way, basically, I can reach through this and I can snag this and I can pull that trigger like I just did, right? So even though it's inside the holster, I can, I can press that trigger back. The same thing as, as this is against your body and the safety is basically going to be on your body side. So, so throughout the course of the day, as you're doing things, you know, there's going to be a little bit of movement here. That safety can get knocked off, okay? Now you might say, okay, well I have this gun and the safety is really stiff and really hard and it would never come out of place. Well, what that means is that it will be that much harder for you to take the safety off when you need it. Okay, So I, I prefer guns for carry purposes that do not have safeties, okay? Um, especially, you know, small thin ones 
uh, that that are really hard to to activate when you need to activate them, either on or off. Very very hard to, to get to. Or if they're really big, you know, they're not going to be great with a collapsible holster because basically the, you know, as, as like I said, as you move around, you might knock that safety on or off. And the, you know, like 1911s are a perfect example of that. I mean, I've seen lots of people carrying 1911s, and uh, you know, the safety accidentally gets knocked off. You know, that little thumb safety. Um, now, you know, with a 1911, I always recommend if you're gonna, if, if that's the gun you want to carry, make sure you're carrying one that has a strap that goes, you know, basically between the hammer and the, and the firing pin. Okay, um, so so they they do make holsters like that for 1911s, and and even with that, I've seen those straps like flip up. Um, you know, so so even those straps are not foolproof. What a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, through you know uh, World War One, World War Two. A lot of the GIs carried their 1911s without a round in the chamber, okay? And I don't recommend you carry it that way, but a lot of GIs did not carry a 1911 with a round in the chamber because they, they, they didn't feel safe. Uh, they, they felt that there was more, they, they were at more at risk of shooting themselves in the foot uh, than being shot by the enemy, okay? Because um, remember, it, it, you know, Soldiers do a lot of stuff during the course of the day. They're moving things. They're, they're, you know, you know, they're, they're you know, so, so, so as they're moving around, you know, uh, you know, sliding under things, moving, whatever they got to move, um, you know, you know, the, 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 the holster is going to get beat up. It's going to get moved around. It's going to get knocked. You know, the gun's going to not get knocked up in the holster. So, so a lot of GIs did not feel comfortable uh, carrying the 1911 around the chamber. And that, you know, and that, you know, that's that's just a little bit of history. I've, I've heard that uh, from many sources. Okay? Um, now, a lot of times people will say, well, how about a, a, a rifle, right? This gun has a safety, right? Uh, okay, safety. You know, we, we carry, you know, we, we use the safety with this gun. Well, here's the thing. that We have to use the safety with this gun because basically there's nothing covering the trigger up, okay? So when I have this gun in the, in the sling, okay, um, you know, first of all, um, you know, with, with with a handgun, once it's in the holster, right? You, you can't, you know, especially if it's in a, a, a Kydex holster like this, or if it's a double action in a holster like that. You know, once oops, once it's in the holster, you really have no way to get that to, to that trigger. It's not going to snag on anything, or if it does snag on something, and it's a, a stiff trigger like this, uh, double action only, it's, you know, it's, it's not going to get pulled. The uh, the trigger on rifles is, is pretty light. Um, you know, you know, it, it's relatively light and it's exposed. It can catch on a lot of things, especially if you're in, in the bushes over here. The other thing is, whereas the handgun stays in the holster pointing down, with this gun, a lot of times, I'll, you know, we got to move it around to get it out of our way so we can do stuff. So I don't want the gun over here. You know, then, then basically I'm going to flip it around. So if you're doing any type of, uh, of unit training, okay, any type of unit training, the, you know, especially at, at you do some more advanced courses, the muzzle will at some point get pointed at somebody. Okay, um, you know, even if the goal is, you know, even even if like the instructor say, make sure you don't point that muzzle at anybody. You know, if you're doing realistic type of training out in the woods where you're doing different types of like if you're doing like wedge formations, um, you know, if you're doing like echelon, if you're doing different types of form formations where everybody's not on a static line, if you got people shooting here and then somebody shooting further up and somebody shooting further up that way, um, if you got people, in, you know, basically muzzles are going to end up sweeping people, okay? I mean, that's that's just, you know, advanced warfare, or, you know, advanced training. Um, so, so that's why we have to use that safety. Um, you know, because because of that, and because the trigger is exposed, and basically the safety and the trigger function as one. Okay, so basically, this you know, basically you don't take the safety off until you come up, and you you know, just before you're about to get to the trigger, you take your, you flip your safety off. Okay, so basically safety is uh, safety is on. Come up, safety off, pull your trigger, bang bang, put your safety back on, lower the gun. So the the safety and the trigger are one. Um, and, and, and like I said, it has to be like that because the gun is always being being kicked around. Uh, interesting uh, thing for you guys to know about the uh, not about the um, about the AR-15. Basically, on the AR-15, the the safety is that position, far as that position. That was not always the case. Well, in the in the prototypes, they had this flipped around. The reason why they ended up switching it so that the safety is in the forward position. Is because if you're doing a low crawl on the ground, where basically 
you're, you're crawling and you're, you're, you're holding the sling and you're basically kind of dragging the gun behind you as you're crawling forward. As the gun is being dragged forward, what happens is if this if this gun is in any other position, if this safety rather is in any other position, basically as, as the rocks and dirt hits it, it's going to make it go straight. You know, so as, as everything is being pushed back this way, it's going to go straight. So that's why the AR-15 ended up with the safety in the position that it ended up in. Okay, because when it was in, because basically even if you had this, let's say in the fire position, if you start dragging this ground along, you know, this, this, this gun along the ground, first rock that it hits, it's going gonna, it's gonna to flip like that. Uh, so you'll go into the safe position. So that's the natural place for this to be if you guys are doing a low crawl uh, where you're basically holding out to the sling and, um, and, and dragging the gun behind you. Okay? Um, so, so that's the reason why we have to use safeties on, on rifles because, you know, the, the rifles do end up pointing in a lot of different directions. You know, as we're crawling on the ground, dragging in front of us, you know, basically it might very well be pointing at the guy right in front of us, or, and the guy behind us is, is pointing his gun right up our ass, basically. Um, you know, so, so you know, and, and the trigger is exposed. That, that's the main thing. So basically, if you have a striker-fired gun, it has to be in a hard Kydex holster. Okay, now, there is an exception to this, okay? There is a historical exception to this. I have here a... Uh, Remington 1858. This is a single action only, okay? What that means is you have to cock the hammer back, right? You have to cock the hammer back uh, before you can pull the trigger, okay? Um, so with, with this type of gun, it was meant to be used by cavalry in cavalry charges. So this is actually an assault revolver, okay? Um, you know, this is probably, these, these revolvers were probably the only handguns that were meant to be used offensively, okay, instead of defensively. Uh, you know, the only handguns, you know, I mean, Colts and these Remingtons, you know, the only uh, handguns in history, because after that they were relegated to purely defensive shooting. So here's the deal, if you're on horseback, right, you've got the gun over here, okay, uh, the, the horse is bouncing around, okay, if you grab the gun like this, finger off the trigger, there's a good chance you're going to drop the gun. So basically, with these type of holsters, the trigger is cut out, okay, so that when you come here, you can get your hand in the trigger, pull the gun up, hold it firmly, and then basically what you do is you come up here and you cock. And basically what I'm doing is I'm using, again, I'm using my finger in the guard to steady the gun so it doesn't fall out of my hand. Now, even if you have a lanyard, right, that's attached to your body, you know, if, if, if still, if the gun falls out of your hand and it's bouncing around on, 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 on the uh, lanyard, it's not in your hand and you can't use it. Uh, so the gun has to stay in your hand while you're bouncing around on the horse. Now, not only that, but after you fire each shot, because what happens is this caps in here, right? You guys see these caps? Okay, after I fire these caps, um, I want to lift the gun up to cock it. And, I, and the reason for this is because I don't want these, these caps falling inside the gears because if I'm doing all my cocking in this position all right the, the caps are going to fall inside the gears here and the gun is going to jam up so that's why when I cock this gun I want the I, every time I fire this gun I want to cock because I'm, I'm, I'm on the horse right I'm controlling the reins with my left hand I'm using my right hand to shoot okay so I have to keep my, my, my finger in the trigger while I'm doing that so the gun doesn't fall out of my hand okay so so as I as I um, you know every time I cock I need to lift the gun up to make sure that the caps fall out okay and the same thing if when this goes back into the holster when this goes back into the holster i want to keep my finger in there until until the gun's safely in the holster so i don't drop the gun so again you can see you know this only works with a single action gun because i can squeeze this trigger all day as long as that hammer is down this gun is not going to fire um so there's a big so, so basically when we switch from from single action guns over to double action guns now, now we have you know we have different concerns um so I just wanted to put that out. There's always exceptions to things. Um, so if you find yourself in a situation where you're on horseback and you're trying to shoot one-handed, you know, uh, that might be a situation where you might need to put your finger inside the inside the, uh, the trigger guard when you draw. Uh, and basically, you got to make sure that you have a gun that's suitable to something like that. You know, something like this, like this single action where basically the, the gun won't fire if the hammer is down. Um, so a whole bunch of information for you guys to, to, to think about. Uh, if you guys like this video, uh, you know, give it a thumbs up, share it. Um, you know, and, and, and do share the videos because it, it does help 
bring more people to to this channel and and i'm not making any money off of this i don't monetize this channel uh i never actually promote myself even though i'm a gun trainer and i train people i i you guys just have never really heard me try and promote my business because that's not what i'm here doing this this is purely entertainment what i'm really doing here is i'm sharing uh, and i'm trying to invite people into our into our lifestyle okay the more people that we can get on our side um, especially people that are not shooters okay those are the people that i really want to attract people that are not shooters so if you guys are on facebook share on facebook because um you know it, what we really want to do is attract people that are not uh shooters already that don't own guns but we want to bring them in educate them you know teach them that this is a fun safe sport uh and then basically get them to vote in you know to, to protect our gun rights so uh like i said so if you like the video share it give it a thumbs up uh and if you're not a member of my channel subscribe i'll see you guys next time